Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I put together this video lecture on the uh, this week's chapter on employment in order to help you out. Uh, I, I know we're not meeting this week, and by the time we hit next week, we're going to have a lot of content to cover. So I thought it would be best if we covered this content first. Um, so we're working with unemployment now. My PowerPoint that you'll find under content uh, includes inflation because that's the older version. I've updated the information. However, uh, I'm going to stop before we reach inflation. So we're really taking a look at unemployment and the labor market. <clears throat> so if we take a look at unemployment. <coughs> We can see that it has fluctuated over the years uh, tremendously. And uh, you might notice that in times of war, we're going to see unemployment rate rise uh, because we don't count soldiers. And also during recessions, we're going to see some changes. So if you look at 2010, you'll notice it's significantly on the rise uh, because we were in the 2008 recession. Um, if we take a look at the... Uh, recessionary data whoops then you'll see clearly uh, what happens in a recession and that the uh, unemployment rate dramatically increases and when it does our unemployment goes dramatically up Whoop! just said that a little bit confused so in your lifetime you've probably seen the 2000 recession but definitely the 2008 recession Lots of people like to say, oh my gosh, so-and-so did this, and so-and-so did that, and this president was better. Um, it's really difficult to figure that out. If you take a look at it in terms of Democratic uh, presidents and Republican presidents, you'll see that unemployment, <clears throat> I'm sorry, labor force participation rate, which means people getting into the labor market, um, is in uh, red, and same for Democrats in blue. So what we're seeing then is not very consistent data. Um, you can see that uh, participation rate uh, for Obama decreased over the years that he was in office. That simply means that less people were working. Again, if we look at it with uh, presidents, you can see uh, unemployment rate. Now this is labor force participation rate. That's different from unemployment rate. So unemployment rate, you'll see under Clinton, dramatically decreased. Under Bush, it increased, and back to Obama, it decreased. So the unemployment rate tended to go down uh, with these two Democratic presidents. Remembering uh, that 2008 was also the uh, recession. So one would expect unemployment rate to increase. So when we take a look at unemployment, we have to break it down a little bit because there are different categories. There is frictional unemployment. Uh, these are people temporarily between jobs. They're friction. Uh, they want to be in a job, but they're not in a job because they're switching from one to another. Uh, they may be graduating and going into the labor market. Cyclical unemployment rises in a recession. People are laid off. This is based on the uh, on the uh, business cycle. Structural unemployment means there is a mismatch. Uh, so I may be uh, looking for a job, but I don't have the skills necessary for that for a particular group of jobs. Therefore, I'm structurally unemployed. Seasonal unemployment is what it says. Uh, there are people that work during the summer uh, at the beach. There are people that work during the winter at ski places, etc. So that's seasonal unemployment. It is uh, often times seasonal unemployment is not listed uh, and is placed into another category of frictional unemployment. So you'll see both. Um, it's important to know that the seasonal unemployment does break out. So those are the three major categories. And then, of course, they're seasonal. So let's take a look at these categories. 
Frictional is temporary, transitional, short term. So that helps you to kind of get an idea. <clears throat> People who are fired, laid off, or quit, looking for a better job. So they're always wanting to work, and they may be wanting to work in a particular area uh, better than the one that they were in. Graduates is another, and again, we put seasonal in also. These are resort workers, Santas, that sort of thing. Okay, so if we take it structural, this is technological, or we can look at it as this is long-term unemployment. Uh, the market itself, the labor market itself, structure changed. So, in other words, certain skills became obsolete. Automation is a large uh, contributor to job losses. Consumer taste may make some things obsolete. Um, farm machinery reduced the need for farm laborers. All of these things uh, contribute to structural unemployment. Now, we can look at Category 1, frictional, and Category 2, structural, as part of the natural uh, rate of unemployment. We're always going to have structural and frictional unemployment. <clears throat> Therefore, we're always going to have unemployment. Uh, some jobs come back, some do not. So the reality is we always have unemployment, usually around a 4%. Cyclical unemployment, therefore, is going to be where there's an economic downturn in the business cycle. So uh, the uh, recession may begin and the demand for automobiles decreases. That's an economic downturn in that business or that industry, uh, and that's going to contribute to cyclical unemployment. You can see that uh, in the graphs below, where aggregate demand decreases, resulting in a new aggregate supply curve. Okay? Reality is, is these jobs are going to come back, uh, so we don't worry tremendously about them. Um, so they'll they'll be returning, and they're not long term. <clears throat> we can kind of check it out, see how your knowledge is. Well, where would we place a Wisconsin construction worker who can't find work in winter time? How about a steel worker, computer programmer, store clerk? High school dropout, unemployed, unemployed. So, well, what are we going to find? You do it. Let's see how you do in a few minutes. So, take a picture and then try it out. We'll try it again in a few slides and you'll see some answers. Okay, so as I said, natural rate of unemployment, frictional and structural. That, that is called NRU, natural rate of unemployment. And we are, we consider the United States to be at full employment if we only have the natural rate of unemployment. That's normal and it's what we, what we should have. So there will be no cyclical. So an employment rate between four to six is really considered a good, a perfect rate. We're doing well. We're employed. We've got full employment. To keep in mind, the relationship between GDP and unemployment is that when unemployment goes up 1% above the natural rate, then the GDP falls about 2%. 1 to 2. Why would it be different in different countries? A couple different reasons. There are better unemployment rates in France and Germany. Therefore, it's much more acceptable for people to be out of work. Uh, our unemployment benefits have fluctuated. The pandemic increased them to, I believe, 18 months. Uh, but generally, they are six to eight months, depending on what's going on. So the unemployment benefits are going to determine who can stay out of work. So our population workforce uh, involves a calculation 
based on total population, civilian, non-institutional population, civilian labor force, and then we count the civilian labor force as employed and unemployed. So we are removing portions of the uh, population, uh, especially non-institutional people. And what, uh, what happens <clears throat> is the Census Bureau every month <clears throat> uh, does a survey of all people. And they are looking for, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they are looking for people that are employed, people who are unemployed, and then what we call discouraged workers. Now, this is a big factor. These are people who are available to work but they've stopped looking. So unemployed people are people not working, but looking for work. Discouraged workers are literally that. They're discouraged and they have stopped uh, looking. <coughs> so the unemployment rate is that percentage of the labor force that is unemployed. So the BLS calls about 60,000 households every month and ask three questions. Are you working? If no, did you work at all this month, even one day? You're a member of the labor force if you answer yes to that. Did you look for work? Again, if you say yes, you're a part of the labor force. However, if you say no, it means you're not counted and therefore a discouraged worker. Okay, so how do we calculate this stuff? Um, again, I'm not necessarily looking for you to know how to do these and to do the calculations, but I am expecting you understand what's going on. So the unemployment rate is going to be calculated by the number of unemployed divided by the labor force times 100. In your book, you have a figure 20.1. It gives you some data for September 2011. And it talks about uh, the labor force here as 14, uh, I'm sorry, here's my cursor. Uh, the entire labor force is 154 million. Unemployed is 14 million times 100 gives us a 9.1%. That's the unemployment rate. And we also look for the labor force participation rate. That's going to be the percentage of working age population in the labor force. So we take the labor force, divide by the working age population times 100, and that's going to give us the labor force participation rate. That's important information because it tells us how many people are actively employed. Again, for September 2011, it was 64.1%. Another calculation is that you'll see is the employment population ratio. <clears throat> That's the percentage of the working age population that is employed. Remember, working age is considered to be 16 and above. 14 to 16 may get working papers and would be counted as a working age population. So that calculation is employment divided by the working age population times 100. And that's going to give us a ratio for September 2011 of 58.3%. Okay, that, those data give us information for creating policy. Um, and that information helps decision-making processes. <clears throat> and also comparison. We'd like to know how bad is it during the pandemic. So what we're looking at then... <clears throat> is the problem between people in the labor force. You have to, you have to uh, distinguish between unemployed and people who are not in the labor force. It doesn't do us any good to count a 13-year-old who's not working as unemployed because that skews the data. Um, another is that we overstate the true extent of joblessness because when they call and do the survey, they don't verify that information. So uh, people can lie. Uh, still, it provides us with some good information. Not exact, but helpful information. <clears throat>